So I just want to leave everybody with this one thing that if you're someone who's thinking about getting into real estate, and I and I believe that at some point in everybody's life, if they don't like the job they're in, they think about real estate. Mm -hmm. I just think it crosses everybody's mind. So if you're in that situation, your one big piece of advice for them would be what? Uh, um, after seeing your operation, honestly, I think it would be if you're really going to be serious about doing something like that, join a team like yours. Um, you you definitely have more support here going than uh, most things that most people I've seen in in the companies um, to have. But the other thing is, is it's like, you just, you got to go in full time to sit there yeah. and think you can pick your hours and I can do this because everybody says, the first thing they say is, I wanted to be able to work when I wanted to work. And it's, I don't everybody think everybody says that that has never happened. It's if you can't be there and if you're not going to willing, if you're not willing to do the hard work, um, the knocks at starting out, you're never going to make it anyway. I was, I was, I was amazed. We had. Uh, 30 people on a Zoom call. We have 30 people that are signed up that are in school right now that are going through getting their tests and they're going to be joining the, the team, you know, at, at some point in quarter one, quarter two, when they get done, yeah. able to take the test and all that. And I was like, there's no way anybody's going to raise their hand to this question, but they're new and they, you know, they just yeah. don't realize. And I said, who on this call right now got into real estate to set their own schedule? And 90% 90. of them were like this. I was like, Okay, well, that's you work for other people. You work for buyers, sellers, and investors. They don't work for you. You're gonna be like my whole thing. You're gonna be working the weekends when they're off. You're working for them. You're applying for a job every single day. As much as you want to believe you can set your own schedule, your schedule is determined on the people that you're helping buy, sell, and invest in real estate. Period. End of story. I think that's that is the best advice that. I got coming in as well. One of the best pieces of advice was, yeah, my this, is not, and this is not part-time. Yeah, my nieces and nephews went on to do it and they, they see me succeed at it so they think it's easy. And then it's like, you know, when you have kids especially, it's like you're not there on the weekends. You're not getting there every time they get a ball game. You know, you're losing your nights. You're not, you know, so it's, it's a real hard business. I, unless somebody wants to be dedicated, it's I, just I'm, not the thing. Obviously two daughters right now they're in real I'm missing. School, right? I'm missing stuff. I mean, <laughs> right. they're, they're in real estate school. They're yeah. gonna be. Um, like my youngest is she. It's her one. It's her first birthday today. Yeah. yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, you know they're down in Florida. We're up here in Connecticut. Um, and I've you know, one of the big things is communication. Always like me and my wife before we had kids, we communicated at length. I'm a nerd, so vision board and like, what's it going to look like? Who's going to do what? Whose responsibilities are going to be what? And I was very upfront, like, I'm going to miss a lot of things. I'm going to miss some birthdays. I'm going to miss some t-ball games. Right. And there's going to be things that I miss building a business and building the life that we want. Because our life isn't just 20 years of, of raising our kids. Our life is going to be well past that that portion of our life and so what do we want the whole thing to look like there's going to be sacrifice do you regret any of the stuff you missed because to your point you're going to miss stuff if you're going to be successful in this business um or no regret no I, and there's always regret i mean it's like i've i've gotten a lot of really good friends and relationships out of this business and it's been very rewarding it's nice it's rewarding helping people and uh so very fulfilling. I never had kids though. You don't have kids, but, no. but, but missing the things, things, the need, whatever it is, you know. You know, you know, a, a parent. You know, my father passed. He raised us. He was single dad. He raised three kids. And you think all the time she said, you know, I can't make it there this time. I'll make it next time. Mm. And all the time, I mean, he would come up and he'd stay with me. He'd bring five of his friends, and you know, I mean, we had great times together. But. You know, you always said, you know, working 70 hours a week. Wow, I could have, you know, spent more time there. So, yeah, there's regrets. But I think that's like anything. You know, you're always going to have regrets on how you do things. And I guess it just makes you appreciate them more. You know, the things that you, you bend a little bit more to do now. And I think that speaks to where this industry is heading to. The, the solo, the person doing it alone or the person doing it with others. The person doing it with others is going to be able to leverage their time a little bit differently. Yeah. Right. You have to conquer and divide. Or yeah. divide and conquer. Actually, the other way around. So it's... Uh, What's your big piece of advice? Somebody starting out. Wow. Uh, or thinking know, about it. 
the, I mean, I'm very fortunate. I'm in my personal relationship as long as I've been in real estate. And I have to say, I say this because it's, that's not often stated in real estate. It's got a high divorce, divorce ratio, the whole, the industry. Um, so I often use the analogy of a seesaw and, you know, you try to keep that balanced and make sure that you have the support around you to ensure that that seesaw, when it's tipped this way, kind of helps you get back and kind of keep things in perspective and um, make the adjustments you need to kind of keep that seesaw balanced. And if you're raising kids, pets, you know, your significant others, um, your family, you, you, you're trying to keep all those balls in the air. And let's face it, it becomes more challenging in real estate. But speaking to the statistics earlier, we still deal with the a close to 90% ratio of turnover within four years, right? And I think it's our job as uh, leaders in the industry to stop and talk to people at times that might need that little bit of an adjustment uh, to sustain their their growth and, and placement in the industry. But it's the industry's responsibility also, as I said earlier, not to keep opening these doors and a tsunami of people come into it and yeah. it's, it's an in and out policy and they're okay with them just doing a few deals and then they're gone. I don't know, that bothers me and always has bothered me. Um, so if you're gonna make an investment in the industry, um, for starters, you have to have a personal assessment with yourself or your family or your significant other and say, hey, this is the commitment that I'm gonna be making. Are you in it with me? Because if they're not, you know you're out the door, it's not gonna yeah. work. And also you have to look at the financial component. There is not a lottery ticket in this business. You're not gonna be making an income. Uh, an agent called me the other day and asked me that. She's uh, a girl that wants to become a real estate agent, excuse me. And I said, you know, honestly, you probably better look at about nine months before you're going to see any real, any any return, and that's not even necessarily going to be substantial. But you need to know what your monthly commitments are and how you're going to make yeah. those. Because if you don't, and you don't have that six to nine month nest egg, you're already now in another potential but I statistics, say, right? I have to say, do you know how many agents were my past clients, and they thought yeah. it looked so fun that it they looks. became yeah, real estate agents? True. And a so many of them still so, work at our yeah. office. Yeah. So many agents yeah. that the that new agents they either say, "I just love," I've always loved homes. Yeah. You hear that? Oh, I hear that. Yeah. Or yeah. it's when I bought my house, I really like. Oh, said I, I could see myself doing it, or this yeah. looked easy, and yeah, I mean, we know it's not not easy. So, yeah. I, I would I would agree that uh, the industry needs to do a little bit more. Uh, for sure. So we need more leaders in this industry. I think if if you're thinking about this industry right now as an agent, just know that there is a real need for a leader. So you put in the time early, you really love this industry. You, you really think that you you know, would thrive in this industry. There's going to be a spot for you as a leader someday. For we sure. need more woman leadership, women leadership. In, in the industry, we've got like 60 to 70% of all agents are women, but yet the leadership is is flipped the other direction when you get to like the, the, total, the higher, level, the, the yeah. higher, higher mm -hmm. level. Um, need more diversity in, in this industry. And and so if you're thinking about real estate, you know, I, I would talk to people in your local market, but, you know, do your homework and, and have that self-assessment. But I think it's a beautiful career. It's not going anywhere. You saw that in the last couple of years, people, are always going to care about real estate and it's something technology can't disrupt. Like you want to keep the rain off of the top of your head. So buildings are going to matter mm. forever.